Good morning, everyone, for this uh, roundtable on mobile storytelling. We have, we're lucky to have very interesting people around the table. Marianne Levy Le Blanc, I'm sorry, I always forget exactly what it is that you're doing. I'm in charge of the web, pro web productions. If you understand why I tend to forget that, and she will talk to us about a few uh, productions focused on mobile for Arte, Arte being a French uh, channel. Sylvain Buisson to her right, who will present to us a demo and a preview of a new project called The Republic, if I'm not mistaken, inspired uh, from a few things that you've worked on, but it's clearly focused on mobile storytelling. And finally, David Dufresne, who will talk to us about everything that he's done, not only on mobile, but also his latest project was called The Infiltrated, which is a fascinating uh, project because it was written and broadcasted in real time. So um, I don't want to talk any longer on uh, presenting our guests. They will speak themselves. In the case of Simon, you may not have had a chance to discover what he's done. But Simon, if you want to start and tell us more about the Republic, what it is it about? Um, hello. The Republic is a project that I started after my first interactive fiction called Why and I, that came out three years ago. I was looking for a uh, interactive fiction that can only be watched on a medium on which you can interact. So the spectator is uh, always active. It's uh, co-produced by Resistance Film for France and France TV for France Television. We shoot this fiction this summer. And every time we do that, we come up with a prototype so we can prototype on our end the interface and test if the interaction functions work, works. Because you'll see that every time we kind of reinventing a system to navigate the film. And for the first time, as far as I'm concerned anyway, it's the movie that is mobile first not mobile only. There will be a version for the computer, but it's thought for a mobile phone. And you can touch the, the screen and you can scroll up and down in the flows that are presented, that are online. So I just want to show you the preview. It's a preview that has been made from the prototype. It's kind of a teaser, just to let you know what it's about. And then I'll do a quick demo on the interface, so you can talk. So we can talk about it. What's that? I still don't understand why he doesn't want us to go to San Luis. Hello, everyone. Hello on this live production. I am about a few meters from the Republic metro station. What is this noise? He's wounded. My leg. Somebody has to come and get you. Navigate between three video live. Mm -hmm. Let's get out of here. I can't believe that they were in the subway at that time. We can leave them here and they'll come pick them up later on. If you see people, we're good. If we see the rescue team, the firemen will just run away. Come. So 
So on November 13, three weeks after the, reseal, the release of We Die, with my co-author Olivier de Mangel, we started thinking of the next sequel. And it's not only that we wanted to talk about the terrorist attacks, but it was really hard to talk about anything else, really. The subject was just un unavoidable. And what was relevant to us is that we were part of those nights of horror with a mobile phone, with a BFM TV on, uh, with the information coming to us at the time that we found at the same time very chaotic and scary. So we try to tell our night of the way we lived that night of uh, attacks, terrorist attacks in Paris. And that's why we're in the subway. And think when We or Die was a movie with holes and there are several uh, cameras and 10 different, how can I say it, sources of all these students. Here you have three live flows of uh, three people who are about 30 years old. It's about the same generation. And they start this live Facebook to get through that night, either to let people know, to save themselves, or to help others. So these three layers are all set up together in the application of the movie. So this is a very quick demo. So I launched the video, we shot three minutes to give you a prototype of what the viewers will see when they have a phone in their hand and they launch this, this movie about this drama, this night, this crazy night. So we started right away with the drama of the attack, where in the final version we'll have a longer version. So you can see all these young kids who are in the middle between the metro trying to survive in the metro. These three characters who are only going to be thinking about one thing, getting out and hiding. So this is about the basic survival instinct, and between um, that we have uh, urban explorators who are doing an exploration in the subway station Saint Martin, which is next to Rep République, the one where everything happened, and they chat with their followers, and they decide to go and save lives because they know all the hideouts of the subway and they know how to get around it. So they have, of course, dilemmas. They don't know someone to get out, someone to stay. In, among the young ones, one wants to help, the other one doesn't. So this is all about all these questions. It's about the fear and the anxiety that changes everything, and also what they get on the news that changes their emotions, their reactions. And the upper layer, which is about the psychosis, the paranoia, and which touches on all the collateral victims who are not affected directly by the attacks, but who know of close, one, close ones who are affected, impacted, and who are wondering if they should give in to fear or not. So the audience has an experience of about 30 minutes where he follows these three different uh, groups. And he becomes the active viewer of this experience. And he can choose if he wants to go down in the subway. As you can see, the center, the focal point of the uh, attacks is under the surface of the ground. 
and uh, it's very uh, scary how all these people stuck down below but if he doesn't have the strength to go down there he could choose to stay at the ground level and make his own film his own storytelling as we did where we were cruising through that night of November 13th with friends who were uh, finding shelter in bars nearby and who were hidden, who were scared with all the chaos of Twitters and all the media going on. Of course, we'll go back in more details and we'll talk about what brought you to do this type of project. Um, yeah. Now it's your turn, David. You picked two projects to talk about. The first one was not only mobile, it had a version for Navigator and Mobile, and the second one was called The Infiltrated, which is only mobile. The first one is Orjeu. Hello, everyone. It's very hard to speak after what we've just heard, and I feel really old because the last time I was here was 10 years ago at this blessed time where we're not always on our phones and where I came here to present Prison Break. So I feel very uh, strange to be sitting in front of you and to talk to you about mobile. Orjeu is the sequel, is happened after a series of conversations with these people on what can we do about web documentary, about interactive movies, at the day and age where the phone, the smartphone, becomes the war machine everywhere in the world. Two years ago, Google, Google told us that in the summer 2015 or 2016, there were more requests by phone than by desktop. So it takes me about, it took me about two years to accept the truth. And this is the result of that reality, this movie, which is a documentary that we put together with Upian and Patrick Oberly, who's a journalist, a Swiss journalist, around the theme of soccer, because of course, we still want to talk about the bad aspects of things, so I'm going to show you the preview. Did we really win the World Cup? I'm really wondering today. Wasn't it just a little arrangement that we had? An online documentary to collect. Well, if the team loses, at least you win. You, you win some money. The easiest money they can get today is by fixing a football match and getting betting fraud from the uh, the bookmakers in Southeast Asia. You're going to be shocked. It will change the way you view football. The idea was very simple. We, <laughs> we stole everything from Palladini, and the idea was to think of a short format, but to give you more content with this short format. There's 99 cards, each of them do two or three minutes each for a video, so it's more than a 52 minute movie. The idea was to use the phone to have this idea that we have the story in our pocket and to exchange the cards in the Palini fashion to have more content. So the player had several options to get the cards. Either he would get the cards directly, he'd have one pack a day, or he'd exchange them with other players. The idea of the exchange was to have the thought of the mercato and the commercial market exchange of the players. The problem is that 
In reality, the game that was being thought of and this idea of collecting and phone and tablet, because of course the Palini figure that we're inspiring ourselves from is horizontal. So we're using that theme and we're trying to revamp it. So it worked very well, there's been a lot of exchanges, people would spend nights on trying to finish up their collection as quickly as possible, but if you look at the numbers after 20 days, you can see that the phone has had not won, because we had 44% of the people who used Orge with on their phone, but I still understood that this is where it happens now, on the phone. The same way Simon has thought beautifully about caressing the screen, touching the screen with our phone to go from one float to the next. The idea is not to do a sub-product of television on our mobile or to only use codes that we know already, but it's really to think of what the phone can bring us to tell a story, because that's about all we do. All we know how to do is to tell a story. And so we streamlined it even more, that process, with two companies, Akoufen in Montréal and Narrative Boutique in Zurich. And we came up with a collection called Phone Stories, which is a collection of stories written in real time and that you can actually play in real time as well. Let me try to connect. Well, I'll explain to you quickly. Because I wanted to go on the site, but I can't. You're going to see a very quick video that explains to you. Is France going to sink? Take part in a political adventure in real time. Guide your agent at the heart of the National Front. Your choices will influence his actions and the story and the history. Be ready for April 10th, 2017. So, starting on April 10th, 2017, we wrote in live the story of Rafael Tolissac, who's a fictive character, who's at the heart of the National Front, the political party, and as a user you would be his agent. That's a little habit that I have developed in the last years, but the storytelling would move on every day by interactive, interacting with the news. You were a fictive character, but there was a lot of documentary work. And why did I call it the infiltrator? Because I spent a lot of time in the coffee place, in the coffee shop downstairs from the headquarters of the National Front, where I heard you know, all the gossips and all the rumors. We found out about um, an attack that was, you know, Hap that happened in that building before even the news had uh, heard of it. So I just want to tell you what happened six months later. Six months later, I receive an email 
who somebody someone someone who tells me the infiltrated Donc, it's me we start with a very classic genre uh, politics fiction politics I meet that effet, guy the infiltrated is me and he happens uh, to be a young man avec, uh, who was working at the time with uh, Florian Philippot who was very close to Florian Philippot who were kind of the group of people that I had identified young people who marked a change in the National Front and there would be some plots and things going on um, among them. I had so much worked on the story and researched the story that he was the one that I had identified and Michael Ranger, who was fed up with what he saw, accepted to testify. And I received his testimony with Marine, Marine Turki from Media Part and uh, we got a lot of buzz. So what is very interesting for us is it wasn't our goal at the beginning. Our goal was to see how you can rewrite reality and the news and, you know, contradict the storytelling with a real story. And we realized that we touched closer to reality than a lot of people who followed the National Front in a very classical man manner. So we're waiting. Phone stories will come up with more stories and more uh, content producers and more storytellers. Thank you very much. So now, Jan, you're going to talk about uh, the Arte productions. Maybe we'll come back to Simon and David. Said, do you share this idea, this observation, that there's an evolution between when the uh, navigator was the main tool and now you have to rethink things for mobility or is there room for other things than mobility? Just to sum up the problem. To begin with, the navigator and the mobile aren't antagonistic, but it's a real point. <coughs> Our work is to connect uh, people's works, experiences, and audiences. What we try is we work with uh, various proposals to try and get them to the audiences and to try and make things evolve so that we can get them into a ecosystems, both technical in terms of user habits that are constantly changing. There was a time when we thought things in terms of computers today. We are working with people who do mobile targeted projects and not available on a computer. Having said that, each project, what Simon and David were talking about, for me it's emblematic of what's happening and we're trying to look at these various possibilities what stories can you tell only on one medium what kind of user experience are you looking at which gives these stories an impact that they wouldn't otherwise have uh, the infiltrator for example uh, like we did with uh, uh, burial for my lover with Florian Morin clearly were targeting an audience that are uh, that is more uh, clearly targeted and fiction isn't just mobile devices aren't our only medium but clearly it becomes a predominant uh, medium. Simon, you were saying that you're, you think this, in, this conference is interesting for you because it makes you think about the format of La République before you looked about the subject. And you were saying that the choice of doing it for mobiles was done intuitively. But now you were asking yourself, well, 
is it really the right choice in terms of your project? Yeah, it's true that uh, we thought of our production first for uh, desktop, and we, then Bujawi was one of our producers. We were talking about the fact that despite, despite that it was that despite that the computer was going to be quite interactive, there was a problem of the lean back, and now and, uh, where there's a certain desire to be a little more passive. We may have our trackpad, but it's closer to television, whereas the mobile is an object because it's with us all our always. That's why most couples have problems today, because that's where their arguments take place. We send smileys, kisses, cries, tears. So it's a different way. It's a different emotional space. And for uh, on the computer, it's very different. But do people really want to do that on their computer? It's not so they, or don't they just want to lean back and that we have this tactile, tactile and you never put away your phone. You're looking at video or trying to you have to keep it in your hand. So it was obvious for us to think about that and then my approach is always about the same. But we also have to choose a story that's appropriate and that works with the medium and the interaction it provides, uh, the loss of quality of information, this object, which is very instantaneous and very immediate. And, uh, for example, when you look at uh, terror attacks, uh, it seems obvious that uh, a user, will they understand, are they ready? But I realize that, that what we propose is in keeping with what they usually do on a daily basis. So we put them in a fictional space, but will this... Uh, viewer not be able ready to look at these objects. My, my credo from the start to bring the viewers, the youngest, towards this sort of narration. The mobile was obvious. And also this object which everyone has. I don't know how much time people spent, but Netflix, a good deal is... Uh, consumed on mobile device, on this notion of obviousness for the infiltrator. It's also the way you uh, interact with this fictional infiltrator, somewhere people send messages from the mobile was imposed because of the interaction, or you say, well, you want people to get messages, no, no. The idea for me, the form is a Trojan horse. What's important is the real content. We'll do, we'll do shorts, but we'll do so many that it becomes like a feature, like a film. And at some point, so people spend three months uh, waiting for their alerts, people who are really happy when they came to the bank. But, but the, wait a minute, sorry, Rafael Teresa is sending me a message, this idea that you have the National Front in your pocket during the entire campaign. That was it. it we're not going to let you go. So once you're in a space, a screen, you ask yourself visually what can we do best you could potentially have a discussion with Simon on whether doing an image on the phone has any sense and do it in the same way we said we're going to the text that you're the hero in this story you make choices and then you'll have 
different uh, results. And what's fun, of course, is that the character that you uh, manipulate says, no, I'm not going there, and you can go for a couple of hours asking yourself what to do. So in fact, it's really important to have, once we've looked at the scope of what we're writing, when we write a book, what's the per point of view of the narrator, the reader, it's not the same on the telephone. It's really more than adaptation. You've got to really reconsider everything. My response, Arte would be very happy with that, that you have to go towards some sort of simplification on the phone, because I think it's a place to be simple, where the film should be complex. That's my direction these days. In what you're saying, there are a lot of things how you create images for a mobile. I'd like to come back to what you were saying, Simon, the intimacy. And Mayan, also you were talking about a short that you're producing, where you realize by looking at the short. Let me show you something. What was Simon was saying, for me, it reminds me of the feeling we had with Alma, which has a desktop and an, appli an, appli an application for tablets where this uh, tactile aspect was really well used. In terms of what Benjamin is saying, which is called I Don't Love You, Je Ne T'aime Pas, which is we're just completing the production, made by Tom, Tommy Weber, which uh, is in a vertical image, and which really plays on what, how the telephone works in our lives, not just with vertical framing with the use of the telephone, the apps, the camera. It, uh, we meet a character through the telephone and what she's doing with it. Let me just come back. One step behind is Bury Me, My Love, Antoine Monamo, it's like the infiltrator, tell me if I'm wrong, David, and in the idea a uh, sort of lifeline type app, which is a game, a fictional game, that plays with the conversation and alerts. We didn't come back to that, but I think it's true for the infiltrators and bury me, my love. The notice of alerts which the media uses a lot and integrates into that to the relationship we establish with the characters. And as far as I know, you can only do that on a mobile. You can't do it elsewhere. It's a tool for the narrative and the emotional relationship that's new and gives you new ways of communicating. There's a common point here between Bury Me, My Love, and the infiltrator, because of there's all these messages being sent, and, and it's a very long term, but it's, it doesn't have a link to the Republic. You don't have these notifications, but it's, it's the same kind of uh, dynamics. <coughs> Your story is more or less in real time. For, yeah. In fact, for us, we don't have this interface. True, David. My ambition is to bring the cinema into these media. It's the 16 by 9 film. It's still classical, but uh, what I'm interested in to do in this production is to we take, put the character in the same position as 
the viewer where he has a phone and uh, which means that it's very close up and we that only works uh, on the phone the where the face uh, is 50 percent of the image so it's natively filmed for a small screen and not the kind of uh, big screen shots. I wouldn't write it the same way. I wouldn't uh, break it down the same way. So in that, in it's really conceived for the mobile. The vertical format that was on with, I don't love you. Did you, did, did you do, we really debated whether we should do it on horse, uh, landscape or portrait. A bit reactionary still, I guess. I like cinemascope, if you like, but uh, but when you when you touch the image and there's a parallax effect and the images are recentered when you slide, so when you have two images, they're both centered, and it's like we had two cinemascopes. And what happens with the sound? We're mixing the two flows, and it allows you to follow two stories at the same time, even if it's sometimes a bit confusing with what we call the cocktail of it. You hear someone talking, but, but if you don't, didn't look at them, you wouldn't hear what they were saying. We're looking at a lot of subjects, and, and the screen has all the usages like alerts, which is unique to the mobile. Bear me, bear me my friend, my love, and the, the infiltrators. Social aspect, obviously, these are social networks, which we use mainly through the networks through the phone, Marianne, with Arte, you developed quite a few things. I worked quite a lot on Instagram for, for, the for the social networks. What do you produce for social networks? Obviously, social networks are a uh, publication platform that we use a lot, not just for communication, but it's also a creative uh, environment. What we were happy to launch last year was the series Summer on Instagram, which really reached out to a big audience, which was very original. We see a lot of proposals on Instagram. There are many interesting things, not just what we do. We made the choice of writing something that was very written uh, using comic strip uh, formats and which found an audience but led to a lot of conversations. And that's what's really interesting when it, it came out. We see that there's a relationship to the story that's very different we're in a place where it's very individual and community based and also the uh, episodic side of it and uh, so we're launching a second story a second season next year with the same team and a new illustrator and the social networks are a place we want to investigate what possibilities there are, not just like Facebook and Instagram tell us what to do, how we should do it, because they have their interests, we have ours. We have to say, compared to a previous period where through the navigator we had a direct access to an, to an audience and anybody could be a broadcaster, so to speak, on social networks, there's still that illusion we can all publish, but the rules are not the ones we establish. 
and these rules are very uh, are constrained. And the other thing I always say is that the reign of proprietary platforms, the apps, and uh, and so which are depend on being going through various stores, and we don't control that. So we want to get stories to the public, and there are many new questions here for the infiltrator and fun story, which is the framework for a lot of other stories. How do you deal with uh, distribution? We're looking. You think that's funny, right? No, we're looking. We're not sure. We'll find it, but we'll have a good time. And we're sure we're not going to go to the social networks, as Marianne said, if we conclude from what you just said, well, we avoid them. I'm sure there are a lot of creators, people putting out material. Mobile is really the main platform Facebook, Google, and the rest are looking at. If we don't, if we're not careful, we'll be totally swallowed up. Uh, it's not a question of IP, it's that we need to be independent in the way we create. We got fooled with this Faustian pact. We, uh, we've all, we now we've uh, heard that we're up to almost 100 million who were um, tracked and uh, now we're 2 billion. I don't want to be part of that. It's curious. But I think we could be happier in the end. Well, what do you do? Obviously, we live in the real world. If we're still in the app world, it's Google Store and Apple Store. And what do you want to do? Do we need to go through web-based development? These are big questions. That's why we're here to talk about this. We're all a bit lost, and I get the impression if we don't stick together, we'll, it'll be dog-eat-dog, -dog and uh, we'll tear each other to bits, and we'll totally format our stories, our ways of transmitting them, of designing them, of publicizing them, promoting them. I think it's uh, a panic. There's my answer, which I send out to my associates. Everyone may not agree. I wouldn't, I don't have the same point of view as David. I think you have to be very uh, clear about the technology, the economics of it. But despite the constraints that uh, standardize things, they've always existed for technical reasons. It's an old story. That songs, uh, uh, weren't the same because of uh, technical constraints. For me, the basic rule is to use the uh, adversary strengths and to subvert them and to use them. Instagram never asked to summer the series to be created, but uh, Instagram is not built to do that. But we have the proposal and people appreciate it for what it is. We have five minutes left. I imagine we could go on for a long time. Unfortunately, we have very little time. Do you have any questions? Thank you for this very uh, enriching exchange. I, I have a question on the title mobile storytelling. Mobile means also means moving around, changing places. Here we're talking about mobiles in terms of the medium. If you take that into account, 
There are many things we haven't talked about, what you've just mentioned. We'll talk about that. Mobile video. We worked on a few projects that worked with geolocalization. It's a really interesting dimension. We undertook a project a while ago. It was a kind of augmented reality that was geolocalized, Cinema City. The typology of project that's really interesting. Yeah, and it's something we should be looking at, yeah. That we are looking at. So true, there are many things we haven't talked about. So while uh, we talk to VR, the uh, headset in La République, there's a lot of sound. Uh, we're convinced that, uh, that the quality of a telephone, since the iPhone 7, you have much higher levels of uh, definition than a basic TV. When you're, you've got a head, headphone on, uh, it's more immersive than a cinema, even if we're looking in a 16 by 9 film, the sound will uh, have a huge effect, even if you're looking at the film on a small screen, you're totally immersed in the atmosphere of the film. Thank you for this really interesting conversation. I had a question for Simon about La République. So the user chooses which story they want to look at and when. My question was how in the narrative you manage the uh, viewer choosing their point of view in the cinema, you have one image. How do you manage the point of view of the viewer? With the view, when we write, we already have the user in mind, and we always work with a third person in mind, the viewer. Even at the beginning, we have the beginning of the story, and we have a grid. So we know right away who are the characters, what's their profile, what they'll be going through. And at the same time, with this night of a terrorist attack, we have history itself within the stories, or the stories within history. And there was three different plots and we can see it's really the point of the film. So we have divided screens, like a divided society, like a choral film, so the characters are linked, and maybe some of them will cross paths, and they potentially have links, and even if we have three linear streams, we leave areas to allow the viewer to go up and down, and I continue to say, what I'm interested in saying is not so much that the viewer makes a choice of the story, but that the viewer makes a choice of not seeing certain things, and then to rebuild the story. Maybe one last question. But I'm not sure where that person was. If there are no other questions, maybe just quickly do a quick exercise of what's going to happen in the future. What are the things you think about things you're doing, where, you, where are you going? in the future. I don't know if there are clear directions for... No, there are preoccupations for VR, the fact that we're going to have uh, autonomous uh, headsets so that uh, you'll have uh, lighter headsets. Uh, well, it's a small audience for now. We're talking, talk constantly. We are always concerned about our audiences. 
we get all sorts of editorial proposals, but one of the subjects were simply uh, assuming everyone has a star f smartphone and not everyone has a computer and a good quality connection to the internet. So how do we bring digital works to all audiences without the kind of equipment, the kind of devices we have, maybe partly by the phone, maybe by, maybe by connected objects. So we're looking at all that. To come back to this strange, the other El Dorado. Okay, well, there hasn't been one yet, but let's say there's a second one for the mobile. What's amazing today is that uh, we're building our tools, we're building our spades, our, our basic tools. It's a, big, it's a really interesting time. How do you edit? How do you think about breaking the mold? Uh, we're trying to build a uh, writing machine for people to write live. Uh, it's a challenge. We're making to it. What I really like in the phone is that it's a very sort of uh, crafty sort of bit. So we have our shovels and our spades, and we're trying to find some nugget. And so, really making the right tools. Simon, you have the task of concluding for everyone. Oh, there's a link to be made between interactive fiction and how we use the telephone as a kind of Eldorado, but in terms of virtual reality, which is very, very trendy. I find the two are very close. When we write vertically, with uh, a company I'm working on a VR and I have the same considerations. The viewer, where am I going to place the viewer? How will I give the person choices? And we have three flows in La République. By writing a virtual reality scene, we did this with the producers. We have uh, a birth, the problem, the mother, the uh, doctor, the father, and uh, the midwife, and so we have all these points of view, and we decide on where we look, from how we look at the story, and we have this uh, amazing capacity to navigate in a field of narratives. Thank you.